Hello, today I will be doing a video on some of our egg uh, care, um, things to look for, uh, the incubation we use and that kind of thing. This is our incubator. It's a custom Sea Serpent 48 inch um, fridge style, obviously, and uh, I love it. It has been very stable for us. All right, well, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take out some of these clutches and demonstrate some things in just a moment. This is one of our older clutches. Uh, this is a cross between Anaconda Het Toffee Cattywampus and Het Lavender Toffee uh, Reggie. Um, the first thing you may notice is not just the plus signs, but this guy. This is an egg that has died. This is one that uh, into incubation for some reason. Um, the embryo did not survive and the egg is starting to decompose. They get a little thin like this, they deflate, they have a certain smell, and a lot of times you'll start seeing water droplets on the top of the egg um, from the moisture inside leaking. Um, the reason why there's the plus sign is I mark the top with a single line when they first are laid, that tells me, okay, this is the top of that egg, and then I cross it when I know it's fertile. Fertile eggs in hogs are pretty obvious. Um, you can see the veining. I know this is not the best lighting. Uh, it doesn't really show too clearly, but you can see the veins in it, which it's really obvious. And I find that hog nose, Western hog eggs are really easy to candle. They're usually something you can check within, uh, well, you, oh, sometimes right away when they lay them, it, it can be pretty obvious what is fertile and what is not. So what I'm gonna do is take that egg out and I will throw it away. There's no reason to leave it there and it will just grow mold and be a problem, if anything. This clutch is from Anna Albino Conda, 50% Het Snow, bred to a Xanthic Het Albino. Um, so hopefully we'll prove out mama that she's Het Xanthic. And, um, these eggs, you'll notice, they're also Western hognose, but they are significantly larger. This is cat, one of cat, Catty Wampus's eggs. I normally don't like to move them, but you can see just how different in size. These are absolutely huge. They do grow during incubation a little bit, um, but you know, to some extent, but uh, these are just naturally larger eggs. So I will candle to see if there's one thing I'm looking for, which I don't... It's probably a little early. Later in incubation, I find that I can candle the eggs and the pink eggs tend to be albinos and toffees. And the more, like this one here seems a little more plain. It could be normals and hopefully xanthix in this clutch, but I can't quite tell that just yet. My preferred incubation medium is vermiculite, which you'll see in the, for another reason. This is one of our newer clutches. This is from Arctic Hetzanthic Wanda and Arctic Superconda Hetzanthic Oscar. And you'll notice in this one, I do not have all the eggs uh, crossed. I have the lines, but they're not all crossed because unfortunately not all of them are fertile. And you'll notice even with the bad lighting, like the inability to see because of how bright that light is, the egg kind of um, candles yellow when they're infertile versus one that's more pink and you can see the veining, it's really obvious. And at this point, at five days old, these eggs should be very obviously fertile. So that's a bummer. The good news is mama looks like she's going to double clutch and she's in good shape. Um, I don't like the infertile eggs. Obviously you don't like them because you want more fertile, but to me, it's such a waste of her resources. That poor mom got so big, had all that energy to push out this clutch and half of them ended up being infertile. What I'm gonna do is these infertile eggs uh, are going to end up being a lovely snack for our king snake. I am glad that uh, Lumpy is available. That's our king snake. And then I'll rearrange these so they're a little more spread out. It's not much of a clutch, but last year all I got were two babies from her. So to get six, well, that's three times as much if math still works. Regarding what we actually put our eggs in, these are just the kind of deli cups that you can get for shipping reptiles. What I do is I go around and I tape every two holes 
over so that there's not a lot of airflow because humidity is very, very important. So you end up with just a couple holes that are empty. Um, and I use these larger ones, obviously for larger clutches, and I prefer the vermiculite. So that's the setup that I use. And then I label them here in the front to give me, remind me who it is, when they were laid, and roughly when they would be full term. This was our first clutch of the year. This is our tricolor hog nose, Elvira. She's hypo E, bred to a het hypo E moose. Um, tricolor eggs, I find, take a little longer to candle. Now, this late in incubation, it, it won't matter. We'll be able to see that they're quite a bit thicker than hog egg, than Western hog eggs. These guys are all very happy. Sorry, let me zoom back. These guys are all very happy. Still very fertile, so we should be seeing these babies pretty soon. Now this is Elvira's double clutch, and you'll notice a few things. Obviously the incubation medium is different. This is actually Hatch Right. It's a product you can buy uh, just at a pet store. Um, and I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> I mean, I've tried it and I will experiment with different mediums sometimes, um, but I guess you could say I tolerate it, um, but I much prefer vermiculite, which is what this is, uh, because it holds moisture better. This stuff just seems too dry. Even though the instructions say don't add water, I always I added water to this before I put the eggs in it, and they're still no good, um, or at least not that great. And how I can tell is these eggs are turning into little raisins. You see how they're denting? That means that your humidity is too low and that you need to add moisture. A couple of things you can do, you can put damp and spagon moss on top. You could just put a damp paper towel to make them fluff up. In this case, once I'm done checking for fertility, I'm actually gonna take some vermiculite and sprinkle it on top just to kind of put a, a blanket of moisture on them. Not all the way on top, I'm not gonna smother them, but I'm gonna do enough that they hopefully get enough moisture. I'll keep an eye on. Now these are the most recent eggs we have, so I'm going to candle them for uh, fertility. Tricolor eggs take a little longer, so I'm gonna go through. Mm, that's iffy. This is what I notice in young tricolor eggs that are fertile, they get kind of a circle spot. It's not the obvious pink veining that you see in westerns, but they usually have this little spot and it just grows as they get bigger. So that's how I can tell this egg and looks like all of its siblings are fertile. So I ended up putting uh, Elvira's double clutch in this second, sec second bin because, um, well, I wanted to give it a little more vermiculite to fluff them up a little bit, add the moisture. And also it is a larger clutch. So those smaller deli cups, um, it's a little snugger than I would like, a little more snug. Snugger, that's my word of the day. Finally, this is our first uh, corn snake clutch of the year. It was laid three days ago. It is not a good looking clutch. So I can explain some of the things that I see here um, and that you've seen as well, obviously. They are um, covered in these spots. These are called, um, I've heard them called snowflaking. It's a sign of calcium um, deficiency sometimes in the mother. Um, Cleo almost always had this, even though we would supplement. Some females just naturally do this and have ugly eggs, and some uh, don't. That said, for a first clutch, Peppercorn laid a total of 20 eggs, and she's not a big girl, so this took a lot out of her. So I'm, she looks pretty rough right now. I'll be supplementing and offering her food, so uh, I'm not surprised her eggs have the snowflaking. Candling the corn snake egg, snowflaking or not, you can see maybe, come on, work with me camera, you can see the embryo, the pinkness there. So corn snake eggs I find do candle fertile 24 to 48 hours, sometimes a little longer depending on how thick the shells are and peppercorn's clutch is so, th sorry about that, and peppercorn's clutch here, um, because it is kind of low on calcium is easier to candle. I will be watching this because eggs like this can be susceptible to mold and fungus. Um, white fungus usually just means extra too much moisture. Black means yikes, you got a problem um, because that will kill the egg. So I keep Lotrim and Foot Potter actually on hand for that kind of situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and candle all these guys. I'm a little concerned this guy here that that might be just some staining from when mom laid the egg, or it could be a sign the egg is already dying uh, and starting to rot. Okay.
And with corn snake eggs, you do find like this, that they are laid together, stuck together like this as a clutch. I prefer to keep them like this when they're laid like this, as opposed to separating them. Uh, hogs, they all naturally separate. They don't stick the way that corns do. So um, I just kind of let nature decide what shape to make the eggs. All right, I'm gonna candle these now. Okay, so I candled the corn snake clutch and all of these guys are fertile. The only one that was not was one I was 90% sure was a slug. And now I'm 100% sure. I'll show you this guy really quick. That's the, the slug. Slugs are not fully formed. They are softer, damper. This one has a little snowflake on it, snowflaking on it. So it shows some sign of attempted shell, but there's nothing in here. So it's quite king snake food. Um, this egg here, uh, that's actually the embryo right up next to the side of the egg, that pink there that's not a cut, that's not blood, that's just where the embryo is attaching itself. And because these eggs are low in calcium, that is where you can see uh, like a window, we call it. Um, I've heard it called and I see it much more often in hogs or I have heard of it. I haven't really seen it myself in too many of my uh, hog girls. So um, this clutch does appear to be good. Uh, I am concerned it's vulnerable, but I believe it's good. So what I'm going to be watching for is denting, which would suggest they are dehydrated and I need to add humidity. I will be watching for signs of white mold, white fuzzy mold, which means too much moisture. And I will be watching for black mold, which uh, unfortunately is um, well, it can be dangerous, but I do find healthy eggs do not develop the black mold usually. I've not, I've heard those stories about, oh, the ugliest eggs can produce perfectly healthy babies. And I absolutely agree that has to be true, but unfortunately every ugly egg I've ever had has had nothing viable inside. So hoping this year is different. So that's where we stand with our eggs right now. I thought I'd show you my egg candler really quick. This is just something I got off of Amazon. I believe it is designed for chickens. I like it um, because it is LED, so there is no heat emitted from the light, and it does the job quite well. It has a soft tip here that can be removed, uh, but it helps focus the light in on the egg, so that is my egg candler.